All right, so for question 12, I've got silver chromate. Silver chromate has a KSP of nine times 10 to the minus 12. Um, and then to that solution, we add the strong electrolyte uh, potassium chromate. What is the concentration of silver, right? At that KSP or given that KSP. So we've got two things taking place. I've got my silver chromate, which is a weak electrolyte that ionizes. to give us two silvers and one chromate. At the same time, we have the strong electrolyte, potassium chromate that ionizes all the way to give us two potassiums and a chromate as well. Um, we know the KSP, right? KSP would be the concentration of silver squared times the concentration of chromate. We know that value. So what's that first row um, in the ice table gonna look like for us? Or what's the, what's the equilibrium row in our ice table gonna look like for us? You want to come solve this for us? All right. No. Yeah. Not that scary. You know more than anyone else in the room. Well, maybe not anyone else in the room, but maybe. So what's our first concentration? Yeah. And, and when I said that she knows more than anyone else in the room, I was just like putting like, you got to project that you know more than anyone else. Yeah. yeah. So I'm not like, you know, discrediting anyone else in the room. You just got to pretend you got to act like, you know. <laughs> All right. We don't know our concentration of silver, but we do know chromate, right? This is a common ion effect. So we've got a concentration of chromate of 0.5 from our potassium chromate. We don't know silver. Um, and maybe this like answers Julia's question from earlier, right? We can just call silver X because that's our only unknown. We're solving for what is this concentration of silver when I have 0.5 chromate in solution? Um, so we know our KSP, right? Nine times 10 to the minus 12. Uh, my concentration of silver would be X squared. I still have to square it because it's still my KSP expression. It's still concentration of silver squared times my concentration of chromate. It's 0.5, right? Divide both sides by 0.5. I get X squared equals 1.8 times 10 to the minus 11. All right, square root of both sides. And X is going to be our concentration of silver, which should be, all right, square root of 1.8 times 10 to the minus 11. I get a concentration, let's see, two significant figures. So I would say like 4.2 times 10 to the minus six molar silver. That's how much silver we can hold in solution with 0.5 molar chromate from that potassium chromate. I don't know, does that happen every time you solve a problem or? Right, so some of you might've been, you might've wanted to call this 2X because of the two silver we can call it X because it's the only unknown. We know chromate through the common ion effect. We don't know our silver. That's what we're looking for. So we can call that X. If you call this 2X, you will still get the same answer. 
as long as once you find X, you go back and multiply it by two. So if you wanna call it two X, you're gonna get the same answer as long as the last step, you would multiply your X by two to get your concentration of silver. But we don't have to call it two X because it's the only thing we don't know. We know chromate through the common ion effect. So we're just gonna look for what is our concentration of silver given this KSP, given this concentration of chromate in solution. Any questions on that one? Yeah. Yeah, we'll do 13. It's on the way to 26 and 23, so might as well. Common kidney stones are composed of calcium oxalate. Right? Oxalate is an anion of oxalic acid, right? Passing your third kidney stone, right? That sounds super fun. Um, patient's urine is a pH 7.5. What would you want to do? So, right, I will tell you, we've got calcium oxalate, right? Here's our equilibrium with calcium oxalate, CA and CO. Four two minus, and I will tell you right. Um, that this is a conjugate base of a weak acid, right? So um, there would be our equilibrium, hydronium. So how would we change right, our propensity to make kidney stones or to form kidney stones? What could we do? Yeah. And why do you say make it more acidic? Yeah, but why why did that happen under acidic conditions and not like basic conditions? All right, so that that's the answer, right? We want to make it more acidic. We want to make it more acidic because this ion is a conjugate base. It is a base, right? So this is like the same reason Flint, Michigan, right, making the water more acidic, put more lead in solution because, right, you're increasing this solubility because it is a base, right? Because that conjugate base, we're gonna make a new pathway under acidic conditions. We add a proton in and we're making, right? We're gonna protonate that conjugate base. Um, it would just be minus one. So thinking of Le Chatelier's principle, right? I remove some of the oxalate, okay? I'm going to come to a new equilibrium to replace that oxalate that's lost. I protonate it. I remove oxalate. I'm going to allow more calcium oxalate to go into solution. So it only works under more acidic conditions because oxalate is a conjugate base of a weak acid. So oxalate will behave like a base. So if we made this more basic, that wouldn't help. Making it acidic, however, right, we'll protonate that allowing more calcium oxalate to go into solution, All right? So we want to make it more acidic. That increases the solubility. That'll shift the equilibrium farther forward, farther forward, and farther forward. Does that help, Sophie? That would be bad. Yeah, if we push this backwards, you're making more solid calcium oxalate, which is a kidney stone, right? That's what we don't want to do. We want to go and we want to let more calcium oxalate to go into solution. Yeah. So under acidic conditions. All right. Question 23, question 26. Um, can someone just look up the molar mass of lead sulfate for me. Three oh three point two six.
So we've got lead sulfate, right? Lead two sulfate. It's a solid, ionizes, gives us lead two plus aqueous and sulfate aqueous. Our KSP would be concentration of lead times our concentration of sulfate, right? We are looking for, typically we find the molar solubility, right? Moles per liter. Um, we're looking for the solubility in grams per liter. So how would we find the solubility in grams per liter given our KSP value? Sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. These would both be X. We don't know either concentration, right? They're both X. Hopefully green's not too hard to look at on the screen. We know our KSP, all right, 6.3 times 10 to the minus seven. So, all right, we know KSP, 6.3 times 10 to the minus seven, right? Lead is X, sulfate is X. So we get X squared, all right? Square root of 6.3 times 10 to the minus seven. All right, and then we get our concentration of X, which is our concentration of lead in solution. It's also our concentration of sulfate in solution. All right, so square root of 6.3 times 10 to the minus seven. All right, my concentration of lead is 7.93 times 10 to the minus four, oops. All right, that's my concentration of lead. What is my concentration of lead sulfate in solution? Yeah, Matt. Yeah, it's the same thing, right? So our molar solubility of lead sulfate is also, right, the concentration of lead sulfate that went into solution is also 7.93 times 10 to the minus four. Molar, right, which is moles per liter, we want to know grams per liter, and that's why I asked Carmen to look up the molar mass for us, right? So we know that one mole of sodium or lead sulfate weighs 303.26 grams. So moles cancels out, and we're going to turn this into now grams per liter that we have. So multiply that by 303.26 and we've got like 2.4 e to the negative one. So like 0.24 grams of this in solution, grams per liter of solution. All right, our concentration, we found concentration. That's what we've done in this whole module. Concentration is molarity, right? Moles per liter. We can turn it into mass per liter just using the molar mass, right? The only thing that we know that we can use to go from grams to moles or moles to grams are molar mass. All right, any questions on 23? Yeah. All right, we got 26 next, and then we can go back and do 10 maybe. Yeah, Hannah. Your KSP is, is giving you concentration, molarity, moles per liter. Oh, okay. Our, our KSP, right? Our KSP is the product of those concentrations, but that doesn't tell us, right? That's different than, because this is the product of these concentrations, right? Multiplying these concentrations together. What we want to know, 
is not the product of these concentrations. We want to know like what that one concentration was. Right? Does that make sense? Because this KSP equals these concentrations times each other, which is different than just this concentration in solution. And we just we just want the concentration of lead or just the concentration of sulfate because that's what tells us how much lead sulfate went into solution. So KSP is the product of those concentrations. We want to know what is the concentration. So that's why we had to, we can't just multiply KSP because KSP is unitless, right? There are no units for K, um, but there are units for these. These are concentration, this is molarity. So we can go take this concentration and then find the mass of that. So yeah, KSP is our solubility product constant, right? It's a product of these concentrations and their, their stoichiometry, the coefficients of these. Um, we needed to know to find out how much mass was in solution, what was the actual concentration in solution? Yeah. All right, any other questions on this one? 23, we'll look at 26 and then 10, I guess. Uh, buffer question. All right, I've got this buffer, got a one liter buffer. Uh, make it by mixing together hydrogen cyanide with potassium cyanide. Mix the two together. Um, I want to find the pH of that solution. I got to get away from green. I don't know. This is not too bright. It's yeah. All right. We mix these two together. How do we find? We know our initial concentration of both, but we mix both together. How do we find our concentration after we mix those both together? Yeah, Carmen. Yeah, M1V1 equals M2V2, right? Our initial concentration times my initial volume equals my second concentration, right, at my new volume. So for the hydrogen cyanide, we need to do it for both of them and the potassium cyanide. Uh, my initial concentration, right, 0.5 molar. I take 375 milliliters of that. I want to know what's my new concentration at 1,000 milliliters. We don't have to convert volume to liters. We can just keep volume in milliliters, right? As long as it's the same for both, it's fine. So I take 625 milliliters of potassium cyanide at 0.5 molar. I want to find my concentration after I mix them together. So we dilute both of them. That changes both of their concentrations, right? So the concentration of HCN, the concentration of potassium cyanide, we can find both of those. So multiply and then divide by 1,000. All right, so 0.5 times 375. So I get 0.1875 molar hydrogen cyanide and then 0.5 times 625, divide that. Yeah, you get 0.3125 molar potassium cyanide. Now that we've got our concentration of my weak acid and its conjugate base, right? How do we find the pH of this solution? Yeah. Yeah, the Henderson Hasselbalch equation, right? pH equals your pKa, which is the negative log of Ka plus the log of your base over your acid, right? So the pH of this solution equals pKa is the negative log of Ka 6.2. 10 to the minus 10 plus the log of base. What's our base here? Yeah, the potassium cyanide, right? 3125 over 0.1875. pH equals, so let's see, negative log 6.2 times 10 to the minus 10. 
plus the log of 0.3125 divided by 0.1875. So I get a pH of, yeah, I would go two decimal places here. So I would say a pH of like 9.43, right? I would say two decimal places because our concentrations were two significant figures. So that would limit, right? Our Ka was two, but I would say two sig figs. So two decimal places with our pH here um, for question 26. Any questions on that one? All right, we'll look at question 10 then, and then we'll call it a day. And go join the other rest of the class playing Frisbee on the quad. All right. Yeah, question 10 is a buffer question, right? We've got a buffer. We've got propionic acid is a weak acid. Sodium propionates the conjugate base. I've got one molar of each of those. I add HCl to that, right? And I want to find um, my new pH of that solution. So I don't know if this, this helps, um, but we'll draw it out this way, right? I've got one molar of my acid. I've got one molar of my conjugate base, I add 0.1 molar HCl, which is a strong acid to that. What concentration, well, how do my concentrations change? Where does that HCl react? Where does that strong acid react? Yeah. it reacts with the conjugate base. That's where we would take it away from, right? Because our, our conjugate base is gonna react with our acid and it's gonna form more HA. So we wanna subtract, this is an acid, so we're gonna subtract from our base. We subtract 0.1 here, got 0.9. The product of that reaction is more weak acid. So we're gonna add there, Right, so after the reaction, we've got 1.1 HA and 0.9 of our conjugate base. Henderson-Hasselbeck, right, pH equals pKa plus the log of my base over my acid. Right, so the pH of the solution, negative log of our Ka, which is 1.3 times 10 to the minus 5, plus the log of my base. My base concentration is 0.9. My acid concentration is 1.1. So the key in these buffer questions is both of these concentrations will change. We're adding an acid. The acid reacts with the conjugate base, so I subtract here. It all reacts, so I subtract 0.1. The product of that reaction is more weak acid, so I add the same 0.1 here. So that concentration goes up 0.1. This concentration goes down 0.1. At the end, all the HCl, all the strong acid reacts. And now I can find my pH using my new concentrations. But both of those had to change, right? So negative log 1.3 times 10 to the minus 5. Um, plus the log of 0.9 divided by 1.1. So I would say two sig figs, right? We get a pH of, well, it should be three significant figs. Oh, we'll say two sig figs because of Ka. So I would say like 4.8. Eight zero would be our pH. I get 4.7989, which, yeah, I would round up to 4.80 for our pH. Yeah, Sophie. The exact opposite would happen. If we added a strong base to that, I would subtract here. It's going to react with my weak acid. That concentration goes down. 
The product of that is more conjugate base. That concentration goes up. And then, yeah, Henderson Hasselback with those new concentrations. Yeah. All right. Good luck on the exam on Thursday.